This video will cover the topic, Solving a Quadratic Equation by Completing the Square, Exact Answers. Note here that when we say exact answers, we mean that the answers will have no decimals in them. In other words, when we get to our simplest answer, we will not convert it into a decimal answer. So, what is completing the square? We use this method to solve a quadratic equation when we have a quadratic polynomial in the equation that cannot be traditionally factored. In order to factor it, we follow the steps of this method to convert the quadratic into a perfect square, which means that it will be factorable into two factors that are equal, such as x plus 3 times x plus 3, or x minus 5 times x minus 5, which is also written as x plus 3 in the quantity squared, or x minus 5 quantity squared. Once it is converted into the form x plus or minus blank squared is equal to blank, then it can be solved. This method of converting a quadratic equation into a perfect square is called completing the square. That sounds useful. Can we work through an example in order for me to more fully understand it? Yes, that is a wonderful idea. Here is a good example. x squared minus 8x plus 1 equals 0. The first thing we always want to do when solving a quadratic equation is to check the polynomial to see if there is any greatest common factor that we can pull out right from the start. It does not appear that there is anything we can initially pull out, so now we will see if this, this polynomial is factorable. Can you tell me if this is factorable? I don't think so. There can't be any factors of 1 that add together to be negative 8, so it can't be factorable. You are right. So a great option for us to take is to solve this by completing the square. We want to convert this into a perfect square and rewrite the equation in the form x plus or minus blank squared is equal to blank, right? Then our first step in this process is to subtract the c term, which is positive 1 here, from both sides, making this equation x squared minus 8x equals negative 1. We are now going to add a number to both sides, making the left side factorable and a perfect square. The number we add to both sides is b over 2 squared, or negative 8 over 2 squared. This is added to both sides. What does that number become? Negative 8 over 2 is negative 4, and then negative 4 squared is 16. So we add 16 to both sides. Correct. So now the equation becomes x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals negative 1 plus 16. The left side can now be factored, right? Let me see. Negative 4 and negative 4 are two factors of 16 that both add together to be negative 8. So it factors to x minus 4 times x minus 4 equals 15. Or I guess x minus 4 squared equals 15. That's right. And see here that the term in the factors negative 4 is the number we got when we took negative 8 divided by 2 before squaring it. So if you do not want to take the extra time to factor the quadratic after rewriting it, you can remember that b over 2 is the number that is added or subtracted in the factors x plus or minus blank squared. Now that we have our equation written as x minus 4 squared equals 15, we can now solve for x. The opposite of something squared is to take a square root. So we will take the square root of both sides. It now becomes x minus 4 equals plus or minus square root of 15. Remember to put the plus or minus sign there in front of the square root because negative square root of 15 squared is 15 and positive square root of 15 squared is also 15. So they both need to be included in our equation. This will give us two answers for x. Therefore, when we add 4 on both sides to get x alone, we get x equals 4 plus or minus square root of 15. Or when we write it out, x equals 4 plus square root of 15, and x equals 4 minus the square root of 15. These are exact answers, so we will leave them as they are. If we needed approximate answers, then we would use a calculator to find the decimal answers for both. Does this all make sense? Yes, that is a useful method for solving quadratic equations. I just subtract the c term from both sides, then I divide the b coefficient by 2, then square it to get the new c term. Then I can factor that into two equal factors.
At this point, I can take the square root of both sides to reach my final answers. Exactly. I think you are now ready to do this all on your own.